This is our review of the Uchimer 51 catamaran. Uchimer have a reputation for building very strong, very fast, very reliable and very beautiful catamarans to take people across oceans and for circumnavigations. Let's see what we think about this. So let's have a look at safety and design of this Ultramar 51. I'm not going to lie, I'm a huge fan of this boat, so I'm going to try and keep my points unbiased. Ultramar are famous for these molded outboard helm bucket seats. It is a fantastic thing to be able to feel the boat through a carbon fibre tiller, but I want something a little bit more protected on long night watches. So they very kindly provide you with this outdoor helm station. It is a comfortable and padded seat with a footrest for those of us who are smaller in stature than others. We would ideally however like to see a little bit better bracing, maybe some port and starboard armrests would make you feel slightly more secure on those long night watches. But aside from this minor issue, the helm is well set out, navigational instruments are clear and easy to see, the lines lead aft and visibility both forward and astern is fantastic. Now let's see what Teresa has to say on this oh so important issue for us. Yeah, it's not really designed to no, it's close open. the helm. Is These it? are open helms. Yeah. Absolutely, they're open helms. Yeah. We know in my opinion on open helms. <laughs> well, I mean, look, you, that, that's a lot, you know, open helm. I oh, know, so this is what I was saying, that you do at least have the option. Having... I think if it was, if the weather was shitty, you would have to do the watch keeping inside. Yeah, I know, but my point always is like, what if something happens? What if I'm doing the watch keeping inside? You're asleep in bed and I see like, I don't know, a uh, lobster pot or something that I suddenly need to steer into. Steer around. I, 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 I. You run out here, you don't have time to like run oh, downstairs you, you, and wake anyone no, up. No, you autopilot, for, you do, use autopilot from the inside. Yeah, yeah I know, but you, then you, okay. I guess I'm a bit old school, like I think, if you're changing. We'll go and look at the nav station you, inside. That's, that's, what, that's what we look at now. So this, I don't believe, is practical for a, a shitty night watch in this, you know, Western approaches when it's blowing a seven, you know, and there's like literally you got on a beam sea where you've got bloody seawall coming over here. So go and look at the interior helm position. <laughs> okay, so this is it. This is interesting actually. So this is the inside helm position. Yeah. So this is where you would do your watch. Um, I guess if you're on watch at night. So you're sitting here, good visibility. And obviously, presumably, you can control the autopilot from here as well. Yep. But you can only see the, uh, the, the Genoa or whatever, your four cells from here. You can't see the main, but... Yeah, you can see the main from up there, so you can still keep an eye on your sails and your trim from inside. So that's important. Oh, never forget, you sail a cast around by numbers, so you're not feeling the boat. Yeah. You are literally, you, you know, yeah. when you've got, when you're hitting, if it's 20 knots to reef, you know, you'll get, if you set an alarm, I mean, we'll have an alarm set at yeah. wind speed. Yeah. And so you then go reef. Yeah. I don't know how you wake the other person up anyway. Well, it depends. Well, I guess that you would. You wouldn't go up to that humming position by yourself in the middle of the night. If you were clipped on, it's not leaving the cockpit. I don't know. All right, well, let's, let's walk it through. How would you clip on? You're inside, you don't need to be clipped on right now. Right. And now you walk out here. Is see, I've seen, I've seen it done here. So you'd have to have a clipping on point up here. A strong point there, there you go. Okay. That's a strong point. Okay, so you clip on down here, and then with a the tether, you can get to your yep. and whatnot. So yeah, you can do it. You still expose the elements. I don't know, it's, it's not... Don't forget, this is a cat, so it doesn't heal. So to go from there to there, yeah. you're, I mean, you are in a completely enclosed cockpit. So you cannot, Yeah. In a, if you're at the point where you're going to get washed out of this cockpit, yeah. From so you going. Can, yeah, you're right. You can click on there, and you could probably put like something else. You wouldn't need it with a two meter tether. Yeah. You know, really, from there. I mean, God. I mean, at the point at which, at the point at which, you can't get from there to there without risking your life. The other crew are going to be up. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You're not by yourself. Look, oh, how was your night watch? Like, crying out. <laughs> Nearly died. <laughs> yeah. But as you can see from yeah. here, the cockpit okay. tent does not. It doesn't include the helm. No, it is. It is. It doesn't protect the helm. Yeah. So it's not ideal. I think you could live with it, but it's not ideal. No. But the rest of the cockpit is very well enclosed, so it's actually yeah. a very safe cockpit. And it's a beautiful cockpit. 
One thing I do want to commend Utremet on is the positioning of the life raft. This should be the gold standard for catamaran life raft placement, and I'll explain why. In the case of needing to deploy the life raft because of inversion, in some catamarans, the sterns will sit lower because of the engine. The weight of the engine holds the stern down. This, however, does not apply to Utremet, as the buoyancy is adapted so that in case of inversion, the boat still sits trim. In the case of an unsuppressible fire, this is normally going to occur either in an engine bay or in the galley. This could make accessing the life raft from a stern locker very difficult to do. In my mind, having a life raft placed forward is a logical and safe place to be able to deploy it away from potential fire. So the slightly exposed helm stations drag the scores down, but the life raft position brings it back up. We're going to give this a good 8 out of 10. So let's start this assessment of build quality by getting straight into the engine bay. It should be noted that because of the step in front of the engine bay access hatch, you can only really open the hatch from the very back of the sugar scoop. I'm not going to be overly comfortable doing that in a big C. However, once we get into the engine bay, we can see that everything is really well labeled and set out. The steering mechanism is robust. Look at those rose joints there. You know how much I have a kink for those. Aside from that, the filters and the engine systems are well labeled, clear and easy to access. Similarly, by looking at these conduits, they are full of self-expanding foam. This is genuinely a crash bulkhead and you have a watertight engine compartment here. I am very happy with this. So without further ado, let's go and look at the build quality of the interior of the Ultramar 51. See what we think. But look at this. I mean, it's all things like this, like these steamed yeah, like the, the curved bush. Yeah, but look at things like this. Come in and look at just little things that show that someone's actually put some thought into it. Look, little things to stop the doors slamming too hard. Yeah. Again, I know I bang on about this, but the quality of this woodwork, mm. this step. So, you know, it's a decent mitered joint. This is solid wood. Mm. Grain patterns are aligned, you know, and a, and a, and a good, even and small uh, bead of mastic. Yeah. You know, so we saw a couple of boats again um, yesterday where there was like a couple of centimeters of mastic mm. which was just to fill a void where they'd stuffed up the build yeah but all these little things that that is a quality build mm. and really there's no excuse for poor quality build when you are building everything by you know five axis milling machines and uh, you know precision cut pieces of wood I mean if you think about it you know, an IKEA furniture pack goes together really quickly because it's all cut by lasers. This yeah. is the same stuff. And obviously these things are steam bent. I know it's a small thing, but the fact that they just, you know, they obviously engrave, yeah. they laser laser engrave Uchima into the... Yeah, I do like the design of that, that little window there. It's yeah. quite kind of There's... Scandinavian in style. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's... It doesn't embrace the minimalist kind of ethos that a lot of these um, production cats do. Like, although it's, you know, and like, for instance, there's clever things. Like, I'm just going to just walk you through. I saw them explaining this yesterday. Yeah. So this is a big white surface. Yeah. But this yeah. is a perspex panel that puts light through underneath, so it doesn't. You don't end up in a completely dark hole. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, and it's the same on the other side. So they've done these clever things. If I just walk it through to here. Yeah. So you've got this. Yeah. And again, if I just whiz down and show you the other side. So you go down to the hull. And then you go into the heads. Oh, it's in the heads. But oh. it provides light for the heads without, you know, okay. obviously a bit of modesty. There can't be many of us that have attended boat shows that haven't walked aboard an Uchimer and gone wow. If we try and separate the wow factor from the general quality of build, it is still easy to see how well built this boat is. The attention to detail is supreme from the quality of the fixtures and fittings through the cabinetry, the quality of the joinery, the way that the wood is steamed, finished and the way that it is all fitted together. This is a superbly engineered boat. I have always loved these boats and seeing this Uchimir 51 just reaffirmed how well built it is. It is fantastic to see that Uchimir are still living up to their reputation for building amazing boats. 10 out of 10 Uchimir, well done.
let's take a look at the interior design of this Utrame 51. Nick's already mentioned the wow factor and I completely agree. This boat really did blow our socks off. However, let's try and break it down. First of all, we have this great enclosed cockpit. I can really imagine this being a safe and also comfortable area to be sitting in either underway or while you're at anchor and it certainly would fit plenty of people if you happen to have guests on board. Going inside we have an absolutely beautiful and very practical saloon and galley area. I really like this big couch area, like indoor seating is important to me and in fact all seating. Um, yeah and this is perfect. Yeah it's good. From a practical point of view, all the edges are curved. There's no sharp corners here, which adds to the safety aspect of this boat. But more than that, it really is just beautiful. Aesthetics, of course, is very subjective. However, I personally really love this minimalist design with Scandinavian touches. Looking at the saloon from a more practical point of view, there's fantastic visibility, really great panoramic views all around, especially forward facing. And you've also got really good ventilation with these two large opening hatches and there's a third large opening hatch above the galley. Onto the galley now, and this is an absolutely beautiful galley. I love that little shelf there. However, it's not very big and this may be a deal breaker for some liverboards. For us personally, we don't mind. We prefer practicality over space. And this is a very practical galley. You've got those two deep sinks. You've got the three burner stove. You've even got an oven there. And you've also got plenty of cold storage on the other side of the saloon going down into the owner's hull. Let's check out the owner's hull now. Okay, so this is an owner's version. I really like this boat. Uh oh. You might be surprised to see that this hull is a little bit on the smaller side for a 50 foot catamaran. Again, this is the compromise when you're dealing with a performance catamaran. Right there you can see where the dagger boards live. It does impinge upon the interior space in the hulls. However, the overall design we think is so lovely and it's a very livable space that that compromise doesn't really matter to us. That's good. I really like the kind of hollowed out window in there yeah, as well. It's, yeah, toilet, you know, full, full stack and shower cubicle. Yeah, that's good. Is, it, is that oh, an opaque glass? There's a, there's a little, tiny little port line Oh, okay. There. No, that's good because you, you want to open up the hatch just after having showers. And yeah, but then there's that as well. Yeah. No, it's nice. It's got like nice little touches. Yeah. But that, that's, not, that's a really nice design feature as well. This, this kind of yeah. shelf area. Well, these holes have to be narrow because of this. Dagger yeah. boards. Yeah, that's the dagger board right there. Ah, look, this is a beautiful boat. Yeah, this is really beautiful. Let's now take a look at the master cabin. This is not an island bed, of course. Again, the hulls are too narrow for that, but it is a very beautiful space. It's got ventilation, two hatches, which will provide adequate ventilation, although not amazing ventilation. But it's still a very practical and comfortable space with shelving and storage and that really lovely big window that lets you see the beautiful anchorage that you happen to be in. So owner's cabin. Again, I think, you know, we talked about not making this all about aesthetics and it's very difficult to not do because you do buy these boats with your heart, not with your head, mm. but it's just quality of finish. The guest cabin is very similar, of course, to the master cabin. You've got exactly the same setup in the aft part of the hull. Berth is 170. Okay. Big berths. Yeah. Opening hatch. Three, two opening hatches. Yeah. Your guests share a separate shower room which has that opaque window in the ceiling that we pointed out earlier. There is a separate shower for this room but we didn't film it on the day because it's tucked behind that door. And the forward cabin, this owner has set it out to have a little bunk bed and I have to say this is a really sweet little room. Again you've got your two opening hatches. I mean, this is a uh, 50 foot catamaran so you'd think that it would be quite big but the holes are very narrow. Um, because it's a performance cat and so you don't have that same kind of overwhelming sense of space that you do in your production boats um, down in the living space because of the different design. You've also got the dagger board so you can see behind me that's where the dagger board kind of lives I guess um, so that restricts the space 
down in the holes as well, it's the same as the katanas. But um, the 45 was very, very cramped down, down below in the holes. Like I couldn't even turn around without my backpack like brushing against either side of the wall. Um, but this is more spacious and it feels more comfortable as, as a living space. It's nice, I really like it. I really also like these kind of curved, let's see. This kind of curved wall here, it's a really nice feature. Overall, we absolutely adored the Uchimere 51. We thought it was a stunningly beautiful boat and very practical from a liverboard point of view. The only thing I'm docking a point for is the galley. It was a little bit on the small side, but other than that, nine out of 10. So let us run through some statistics for the Uchimere 51. The length of it is 15.65 meters. Beam is 7.45 meters. Also, as she has dagger boards, she draws between 0.95 of a meter and 2.35 meters. So variable draft, really useful. Displacement, 10.9 tons, and you are allowed to load that to 14.1. Also, she has a huge sail area. 91 square meter main, 110 meter Jenica, and a 31 meter jib, that is huge. So how does this translate into performance? Mathieu was kind enough to send us the polar diagrams. So with that oversized rigged fine hull profiles, the dagger boards and the lightweight, the boat absolutely flies. The Jenica gives her scintillating performance in light winds, but off the wind, you are looking at 23 knots as a polar diagram. This is gonna be a boat that you're gonna be sailing with a big grin on your face. So we are gonna score the Uchimere 51 eight out of 10. That is a fantastic score. There is, however, a faster Uchimere, and let's see how that scores when we review it later on in the series. And our final category before we go to the roundup is the Uchimere 51 and its value for money. The base price for the 51 is 749,000 euros, 850,000 dollars or 670,000 British pounds. However, fully spec, you need to add another 100,000 euros onto that. So you're looking at almost a million US dollars. However, if you scour Yacht World, you can see that a 47 foot Fontaine Pajot or a 50 foot Lagoon will also set you back a similar price. So based on that, you need to make a decision as to whether you would prefer a Utrema or you would prefer a Lagoon for a similar price. However, the boat, once again, is built in France, so you are paying for those labor rates. As such, we're gonna give this a solid, but middle of the road, five out of 10. So that was our review of the Utrema 51. A really really impressive boat I think that everyone will agree there's a few niggles I think that it wasn't quite perfect but first let's start with the many 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 positives right I'm gonna try and keep this brief <laughs> okay firstly I am biased about this boat I am very very biased I have always loved the Ultima 51 um, and before that the 49 I think yeah. it is a stunningly pretty boat before I start with my talk about the 51 um, we're doing a roundup review of the catamarans we've seen so far and we are not using our scores because um, we could be considered to be biased towards certain brands or marks so we are just using the review scores that you've uh, submitted we now have had over 500 of you um, submitting reviews and as such this is probably the biggest collection of independent review scores anywhere on the internet. So the roundup reviews are not gonna be our scores, they're gonna be yours. So if you haven't reviewed and submitted already, the link is down there, please submit your reviews. Anyway, onto the 51, I am biased. I love the boat. I think it is a stunningly, stunningly pretty boat. It is also very, very well built for a boat. So um, there's nothing I don't like about the build quality. There is nothing I don't like about the interior as it's not even a rule of thumb. If you, you can, with, catamarans you either have space or you have speed and if you want space and speed you've got to pay big yeah um, go like, big go, go big and pay big go big, go big pay big mm. so really you have space or speed those are the two and there are some boats that kind of have a middle ground i think i feel that the sea wind 1600 had a very good middle ground but that was still 52 foot catamaran absolutely yeah absolutely i feel like the naughty tech maybe does yeah it and the best. naughty tech 46 does it well yeah. as well anyway 51 you lose a lot of space in that boat. Yeah. So it is beautiful. Let's just go through these positives. 
the interior design it, it is so well made that boat it is beautiful and mm. it's little nerdy things like the, the, the thickness of the beads of mastic they are like they're, they're millimeters thin the workmanship mm. is to die for it mm. is amazing it, you go on there and there is a real wow factor yeah and i think something that you've said on one of the reviews if you're going to do the scandinavian minimalist approach mm. you do it really well yeah or don't bother at all because you can't carry it off if it's shabby. There's nowhere to hide because there's just, it's so minimalist, yeah. it's so sleek that unless it's perfect, the floor's sharp really, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And this was just probably the best example of how that kind of look can be carried off. I know that there's a lot of discussion on, you know, internet forums and whatnot about, you know, the kind of IKEA look, which I'm interpreting to mean like the kind of minimalist Scandinavian look not necessarily the cheap look because this definitely is not a cheap look um and whether you like that aesthetic or not is really up to you but i i do like it very much as long as it's done well yeah and this was done so well and it was just gorgeous i it mean is. we walked on and we we're just like wow this is so many as you say so many like little tiny touches like you know the utrume that had been um like lasered onto the was it korean i don't know one yeah of the it's engraved services. into the korean yeah and you know though i really love those uh, opaque um kind of skylight things yeah. um that they let light into the hull or into the the heads without uh kind of um impinging upon your privacy those i know that it seems like a small thing but the shape of those little port port it's just the design is beautiful what do they call it port holes port, port, lights, yeah. port, lights. port, port lights i always get confused i just want to call them windows <laughs> um just gorgeous everything was gorgeous. it's a beautiful boat yeah look the interior design is fantastic it, it is a leap up from the 49 Yes, so I've not been on board a 49, Northern. but I've certainly scrawled through uh, Yacht World enough times, yeah. and um, yeah, it, it seems like... The, They've raised their game hugely, yeah. and it is a beautiful, beautiful boat. So yeah. I I love this boat. Um, I think really, you know, other other shipyards in France could do better than to actually go and poach some of their, uh, their, their workforce, mm. um, just to try and raise their game a little bit. Mm. So... Uh, the design of the Uchimo 51 is um, fantastic. Yeah. The value for money, it is an expensive boat. You are looking at probably, or, you know, a million euros. Mm. But you go and look at a 50-foot Lagoon or a 50-foot Fontaine Pajot. Yeah. You, you, you're in the ballpark. Yeah, if you're looking at a 50-foot cat, then that's, that's yeah. the... And so if you're paying 900,000 or a million, yeah. it's only 10% difference. You know, if you're, if you're in the 900,000 ballpark... You can you, you'll be able to push the, the, yeah. the extra mile. So yeah. it really is. Do you want um, a boat that is fast and beautiful, mm. or do you want one that is not so fast and not so beautiful but bigger inside? Yeah. And th those are the things. So um, huge, huge fan of the fifty one. Mm. Huge fan of it. And there's not a lot I can say um, that isn't just gushing. Yeah. Um, but there, it, it's not perfect. It's not so perfect. Let's, go, let's go for the negatives. Mm. Um, I just want to put another positive out there, sorry. Okay. I've just forgotten one. <laughs> the life raft position in that boat is absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to explain uh, my thoughts. The, the life raft, there's only a couple of shots of it, is placed on the forward trampolines. or it, it's There's a recess in the forward trampolines. And that means that um, the life raft can be accessed from above or below. So if you've inverted, you can just drop it and use gravity to take it through. Mm. There are a lot of life rafts, and as we've gone through and done our reviews, um, we have had it pointed out by certain manufacturers that actually you didn't see the life raft locker, or we removed the life raft from the locker to give a better idea of space uh, in the at the boat shows, which mm. is nonsensical. You need to know where the life raft is anyway. Mm. And a lot of these life rafts drop out through the floor. They've got lockers that where the, the, the bottoms fall out. Mm. However, and this is the problem, Unfortunately, there was a tragedy um, a month or so ago where four people, um, a, a catamaran capsized off the Australian coast and um, some people uh, tragically lost their lives. Mm. And if you look at the, the footage of that mm. catamaran, um, you can see that because the weight in catamarans is, is at the back where the engines are, mm. the, the, the back of the boat is submerged. Yeah. And... And the bows are... And the bows are raised. Yeah. And it would probably be very, very difficult in a big sea to release a life raft from a submerged mm. back of the boat. So, to me, um, having the life raft forward is, is, is a better position. Mm. Obviously, you know, this goes out to the internet and you can correct us and we'll 
continue with update. So that's just another positive about the HMA 51. I think the life of our position is absolutely amazing. Negatives, Therese? Um, so there were a couple of negatives. The, I mean, from like a interior design point of view, there's no island bursts. It's a performance catamaran. The hull's narrow. I mean, what do you expect? The, the berth size itself was, I think, 170 centimetres across, so perfectly adequate, I think. Uh, but, you know, I know from experience that making that bed every day would soon get really tiresome. Um, the galley was not very big. There wasn't much bench, bench space, so that might be an issue for some people. Uh, I think the galley is probably smaller than our galley that we have at, yeah, at the it's, moment. Yeah, it's a strange design and the, the, and the, 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 the cooking top mm. is very, very near the staircase. Yeah. And I wondered whether that would be a hazard if you were in a big sea. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a couple of little things. And for me, the helm position just... Uh, I just all I want in life is an enclosed helm position. Okay, well, and I feel like it's so hard to to get weirdly. So, the problem with Outremer with the fifty one, I'm not talking about the bucket seats. Those no. bucket seats are designed for like kind of spraying your face. Yeah, it's a kind of light boat. You're kind of careening across the ocean. <laughs> There's like two or three supermodels dancing to kind of like fun loving criminals on the bow, and you're just sat there with your fat cigar in your mouth, kind of enjoying life in the fantasy world that I sometimes live in. However, those bucket seats are not for anything but just... Having fun. Having fun. Yeah. So we're looking to ocean-going vessels yeah. and, and going across oceans long distance where you need to maintain a level of kind of like alertness mm. and not be super tired. Yeah. So Outremer have a, a wheel, a wheel position which is kind of inside the cockpit and communicates with the cockpit and the it's a beautiful position and it could be made better. That, that, that helm is particularly exposed. Mm. And so if, you know, heaven forbid your autopilot breaks and you are, you know, doing long watches in, 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 in poor weather, you are, you're in the elements. Mm. And, there's, and the other thing is, and this would be very easy to fix, it's, not a, be it's a bench seat, but there's, no, there's nothing to brace you either yeah. side. Um, you just, you know, something, armrests or something, even if they were, you know, lift, raisable armrests to just hold you in place for a little bit more security because mm. it's just a bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the helm position for me for long passages. I know everyone's like, you can, you can, you can helm from the inside. You have to be able to helm from the outside yeah. in case of uh, electro electrical failure, mm. having a dark boat, you've been hit by lightning, your batteries go, your autopilot blows up, whatever. And so for long passages, that's going to be very exposed. And your helm position, your outside helm position is always going to give you better visibility than an in, inside helm position. And at night, I just, you know, what's the point in being inside when really it's the outside helm position that should be the one that is best set up for, you know, keeping watch. That is where you should be doing your watch keeping so that you can see 360. You don't have to be getting up and moving around looking at different, out of different windows to see your sails or kind of, you know, trying to see that you, you kind of um, your blind spots that is where you should be setting yourself yeah. up where all your lines are where all your equipment is everything so I get people are like oh but you could just you know keep watch from inside and I'm sure that we would but really your outdoor home station should be to me it's a slight flaw because yeah. even in the Caribbean you're doing ocean passage you're gonna get squalls yeah anyway look. yeah so the home position to me it's it could be better for a long passage maker. Mm. And one, and again, uh, we've done this with another couple of reviews. It, these are minor points I'm, I'm nitpicking. The cockpit being enclosed like that, it's difficult. You can't get to the dinghy davits. With, you know, you have to walk all the way around. Mm. There's no kind of access to the to the, to the swim platform. Yeah. Um, so that's another minor gripe. And the access to the engine bay is only by the like, last step on the yeah. ship's Yeah, so if you, had, if you lost one engine and then you had another engine, you would really literally, because you can't... The, there's a, yeah, it's, the engine access is absolutely correct is right on the back of that sugar scoop and you have to lift a step up to open the hatch so you, you've got to be on the very very back of the sugar scoop to get the engine access mm. and that to me um, I, I don't like that mm. I'd be you know the mid, three o'clock in the morning you know in in in, in weather in weather mm. with a dicky engine trying to get into port on the back of that mm. yeah you'd, you'd be that's not a good place to be mm. not a good place to be but you know these are minor things and you know you you have to argue well what's the likelihood of this happening yeah but but let's just deal with you know mm. it, it's a it's a beautiful boat yeah so your summary summarize the Uchima 51 i think that it is it is 
a fantastically beautiful luxury performance catamaran that is a ideal for liverboards i think that the we haven't reviewed the 45 yet although we intend to but spoiler alert the 51 is better for liverboards yeah and you can load that you can load that yeah i mean the 45 has been made famous by sailing kitty wake uh, elena and uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah elena and ryan right yeah, from yeah, kitty wake yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, ryan and elena from kitty wake have got that bit 45 uh, and that's an amazing boat um <laughs> Obviously, you know, it's it's it's, it's right. Yeah. They got the joke. Did they? I think so. I, I don't know. People yeah. are going to be like, that. It wasn't yeah. No. Whoosh. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, the, so the 51, you can put two and a half tons of weight on that, which means gen sets and washing machines. So yeah. it's a little... Um, my closing statement on this, uh, is it flawed? Yes. Is the, is the flaw in what I can see to be the helm station, the outside helm station for... Um, a long long term long distance liverboard is it a red line almost would it's on, I, it's on the edge of being yeah. a red line would i have an ultra 51 in a heartbeat yeah in an absolute heartbeat it's made easier for us because it's quite clearly out of our budget so we're like well <laughs> <laughs> yeah but so yeah so yeah I, I say this a lot you know I, we can sit and write these reviews and put the scores down and objectively go oh look at this life raft versus this life raft look at this versus this isn't the journey you know you buy it with your heart. Yeah. And, you know, I, this isn't the first 51 we've seen. Um, we actually saw the 5X as well, which, that, you know, literally... Yeah, that was beautiful. But anyway, that's... Uh, is that 60 foot? Or who 55? knows? Anyway, whatever. It's got it's, peacocks and all sorts of stuff. It's huge and beautiful. And, and beyond our price range. Way beyond our price And so, yeah, so you buy the boat with your heart. Mm. And the, I would buy that boat with my heart if I yeah, had well, the money to I'd, buy it. I'd, I'd have to buy it with the kidneys and sell them without the kids. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that is the 51. Um... We are biased. I love the boat. There are flaws to it. Um, Let us know what you think. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, that is another one of our views. We have one or two more in the series coming up. Uh, and then we've got the, the, the roundup video. And then we will be at Annapolis to do more reviews. So, uh, like Grand Mott, do not show uh, a lot of non European boats. So, mm. Maverick, Neisner, uh, Antares. Um, more sea winds actually yeah so we've got a lot more that we are lining up and we you know test sales and other bits so we're going to try and make these reviews more in depth because we've got a lot of feedback from you guys yeah. as to what you'd like to see um so dedicated look at life route lockers is one thing that yeah. you've also given us feedback on um bridge deck clearance is something we've touched upon um you cannot uh, you can i could give you stats of bridge deck clearance it to me is a slight it's a bit of a false you know you, you're getting a false view of whether or not that's going to directly relate to hull slap it and there are too many factors um that that kind of like cause hull slap to just equate it to bridge deck clearance mm. so we're not going to do bridge deck clearance but any other things you want to discuss and think okay can you please you know run this into the equation we are going to kind of update our, our our categories a little bit yes Apart from that, thank you so much for watching. That is the YouTube 51. We will be back soon with more reviews. Goodbye. I just felt something my neck crack. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't nod. I just sit here. <laughs> I, I went like this and it went crack. You've got a straw to feed you. <laughs> so please feel free to subscribe. Click that notification bell so that you never miss an update.